Hello there, Peter here. I'm the owner of the company Webeka. We build custom uh, built websites and uh, custom graphics. Today we're going to be looking at two websites. Uh, we're going to be uh, contrasting, <clears throat> comparing and uh, contrasting template-based website versus custom-built website. Uh, we have a very classical example of a template-based website, uh, something that I see in about 80% of the people who build custom, uh, sorry, template-based websites and the types of problems that they're seeing. The website that we're talking about is uh, skindrift.com. <clears throat> Let's have a look at it. It's, uh, it's loading. It's going to come here shortly. We did make improvements on the load speed, uh, but it is still taking quite a bit of time to load. It's almost, almost there. Yeah, at least we can see the, the home page now. There we go. So it loaded. And we're going to contrast it with uh, one of the custom built websites that we uh, we built. There we go. It loaded. Um, Tannis Massage Therapy and Spa. <clears throat> so. Skin drip uh, versus Tiniest Massage Therapy and Spa. Um, this website has been built on a pre-built template. You can see that it has a whole bunch of this fade effects going on. Um, as you scroll down, uh, different sections appear. With this website, you don't have that. It's a straight up content. Now we can embed this uh, fading functionality into the custom build website if we want to but uh, we just haven't done that yet for this website and this website we're still building it so it's uh, it's in process of being constructed we can still see uh, a bunch of latin text here okay so <clears throat> obviously the load speed is something that is uh, of a concern in this website and we have improved the load speed uh, this website used to load in about uh, 50 seconds um, a minute um, now, in terms of the load speed improvements, uh, it was very difficult to actually get this website um, to improve its load speed because this website is hosted on GoDaddy and GoDaddy has uh, WordPress managed uh, uh, services. Uh, so it's not a straight up hosting uh, platform. It's within the, it's within the managed, uh, managed WordPress environment. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, that means that um, GoDaddy decided to take on themselves to cache uh, the files. Uh, what does file caching mean? File caching is when you take, uh, if you take the code, if you look at the source code of this website. Okay, so that's the source code. So <clears throat> what caching does is it, it basically copies all of the code that's here. Um, copy and paste into the repository and when so whenever somebody wants to look at the website they go to uh, skindrip.com they actually don't uh, go into WordPress and they don't ask WordPress for all of the files uh, they uh, basically upload you with this uh, saved file which minimizes the amount of time that they spent uh, processing all of the uh, millions and millions of lines of code in the back end of the WordPress. If this wasn't happening, this website would probably take about five minutes to load um, for a single page. <clears throat> so this minimizes the load speed. If we look at the uh, at this website, we're going to view page source. You'll see how much cleaner it is uh, just by looking at the at the source code. Um, going to scan just quickly scan through this website you see a lot of the green stuff here and um, a lot of the calls for uh, different uh, JavaScripts and all that thing uh, JavaScript and other files this is the tiniest massage therapy and spa the source code is a lot cleaner here and we have a lot less calls in the footer now this is a widget for the Twitter. 
the reason why it's so big is because uh, Twitter wants to um, add its own code to make sure that the box renders properly. So this is not really my code and this is um, uh, imported from Twitter. <clears throat> okay, so uh, source code um, difference we looked into it. Now what I want to also show you is the uh, the CDN and caching plugin um, functionality. As I mentioned before, it requires uh, CDN. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network and caching plugin, which allows uh, the WordPress to cache, basically save the source code uh, pages and retrieve them. This website, anismashsarstherapy.com, does not have CDN and it does not have caching. Every time that you load the page, it actually goes and retrieves the page directly from the WordPress engine, processing all of the scripts to pull up the information. But because it's programmed in such a way that allows it to uh, really fly and really get this information very fast, we don't even need caching plugins. The website loads extremely fast. These types of websites that are built on, on the templates do require a lot of uh, um, heavy work uh, for the caching plugins. Caching plugins are not free. If we're going to go to WordPress Rocket, <coughs> this is probably the best uh, caching plugin that there is right now. You can look at the pricing yourself. So we're talking about uh, one year for $49. And the plus version, which has a bit more uh, functionality, is $99. And this is pretty much mandatory if you are going to be uh, building a website with um, uh, with the pre-built themes. Custom-built website does not require caching, so you don't need to worry about the payments. Uh, and they are reoccurring payments, so you have to pay every year. Um, never ends. Now let's have a look at another uh, uh, thing that we uh, want to contrast. Um, easy to manage and customize, right? So custom built websites, they're fairly easy to manage and the developer is able to go and uh, customize um, the website to make sure that the client, um, it follows the business. Now for the custom built website, we are really limited to uh, the templates functionality. And uh, I'll, I'll Good to give you a quick overview of how that works. So we're going to log in into the administrative panel and it will take a bit more time for it to go into admin versus the custom built website because uh, there's a lot more code in the back end of this site. And we're also going to go into the WordPress administration of the custom built website. See how fast it loaded the admin panel? Um, Look at that, it, it basically flies. It's so light, it's so fast that you can't really see the difference uh, in in the load. You don't really see it loading, it just uh, almost appears magically. Let's have a look at, um, at the plugins. So we're going to go to plugins. Plugins are basically small bits of program that, may, that expand its functionality. This website uses 34 plugins. Whereas so we're going to look at this website, we have only 10 plugins. A lot more plugins and the plugins that the custom build website uses, they're very light, they're very tiny plugins. They don't really have that much code. That's why uh, the WordPress administration as well as the front end of the website loads extremely fast. And it's very robust, it doesn't break over time. Because the uh, template build website has so much, <clears throat> so many plugins, and they're very big plugins. Um, it really takes a lot of time for it to load, and um, it does break over time. I usually see uh, websites on the templates break in about uh, two, two or three years, simply because if um, PHP version updates, um, somewhere within the plugin, somebody didn't forgot to update a small line of code and. The whole thing goes down and it's pretty much impossible to then decipher what exactly is broken within the website. 
So we have a multi-layered uh, problem here with this website. First of all, uh, it's um, it has hosting, GoDaddy hosting that we cannot have access to. Uh, on top of the GoDaddy hosting, we have a WordPress uh, management platform, uh, managed WordPress platform. On top of the managed WordPress platform, we have uh, the, the actual WordPress installed. On top of the WordPress, we have um, inside the WordPress now we have um, a, this pre-built template um, that is very heavy. On top of the pre-built template to make it editable, they added what's called uh, visual editors. So visual editors are uh, something that allows a non-developer to make changes to their website. So we're going to go to pages. Uh, I'll going to show you how that looks. Uh, let's go, go to pages. <clears throat> yeah, and let's have a look at the... Let's have a look at our story page. We're going to do the same thing with this website. We're going to go to pages. And we're going to go, uh, let's say, uh, let's go to home page. See how fast that loads. And there we go. Here we can actually edit on the front end of the website. The, the pictures you can replace, you can change the text. Um, pretty much the description for each of the massage therapists. Once you're finished, you click update and it's all done. It's very intuitive. And if you want to, uh, for you to add a different section, then you just contact the web developer and he will build a specific section for you that, that you need. Now this uh, website, we have uh, landed at the same uh, level as our previous website, but in this case we still can't edit the page because we have to enter the additional layer, which is the edited elementary. So this is the final layer um, of the programming that we are actually going into. That's where we can visually make modifications to the website. <coughs> And as you can see, it does take quite a bit of time to load it. All right, so um, here we can uh, make modifications into the uh, text uh, similar to what we have done with the previous website. You can also see uh, it a bit more visually. Now, there is uh, positives and negative to, uh, negatives to this. Uh, it's a lot easier to build uh, a page like this for somebody who is uh, a not a developer, somebody who doesn't know how to program uh, code, but they're also stuck with the functionality of the of the visual editor here. <clears throat> and also, another problem is that the way that this works, it has only three breakpoints. So as you reduce reduce the screen size, you can only only make it um, adjust to the three. Uh, screen sizes, but nothing in between. When we're building our websites, we have uh, six breakpoints. So we can <clears throat> reconstruct the website at, at six different screen sizes. Uh, and we can also make sure that it works and looks very uh, nice and professional in between the different uh, screen sizes. So that is really important when it comes to mobile friendliness of the website. It still is uh, quite difficult to make sure that everything looks uh, professional and uh, lays out properly on the uh, on the mobile devices. When we're talking about mobile devices, we're talking about laptops, uh, we're talking about iPads, uh, cell phones, tiny cell phones, large cell phones. We need to make sure that the website appears uh, properly structure, structured on all of the different mobile devices. It's quite difficult to do that with this specific, uh, well, pretty much with any visual editor. <clears throat> and um, things like, I'm going to give you a quick overview of uh, another website, 6A Solutions. Let's go to Services. See how we have those buttons here? They were custom built. And if you click on a button, it takes a person to that specific section. It's nearly impossible to make something like this. Well, actually, it is impossible to make something like this 
within the template visual editor environment. It's just not possible. So <clears throat> we are uh, doing the custom build because it loads fast and because we can make any type of website that we would ever want. And the client is not limited to the functionality of the uh, specific uh, template. Custom built websites, they can be started small and scaled in future. That's exactly what I've talked about. We can start with a small uh, one page website. It can be five page website. And then we can expand on them. We can make uh, very beautiful pages, uh, customized full pages, custom pages, uh, whatever you need. And uh, <clears throat> if we are going to be doing the same thing, uh, we cannot really do, uh, we can't really start small with the uh, um, pre built template. Uh, simply because look at this. We're going to go exit to dashboard. And the developer's time is expensive. I mean, we're talking about $60 an hour at the bare minimum for a developer that actually knows something. And good developers have seen charge over $300 an hour. Now let's go back to the uh, home page. Look at this. We have 25 pages, right? 25 pages. Imagine $150 times 25. We're talking about over $3,000 for um, for construction of this website. And this is what you get if you are going to be uh, getting this uh, thing for free. So if you want this website to work properly, you will need to pay a developer that will be able to address all of the um, all of the pages, um, and that can be very expensive, especially if you're doing some uh, customizations. My recommendation is to not go that route because it can become very complex, not only for you but also for a developer, and a developer is going to be charging an hourly rate too make modifications to, to your website. So uh, start small and then grow from there. Another aspect of this website uh, is the fact that it has, uh, um, I'm going to show you, it has a shopping cart. And uh, it also has an internal pages in it. It's a not it's definitely not a good idea to mix the two. Uh, the reason why is because uh, if you are offering services, you should really focus on the services uh, section of your website. When you have a shopping cart and a shopping module within your website, you will run into uh, conflicts of people uh, not really uh, seeing your shopping cart, so you will never be able to fully grow your uh, online shop because it's people will be distracted by services and uh, other pages that you have on your website and um, for those of you uh, for those clients that come here for strictly services they might get lost within the uh, shopping cart and the uh, shopping module of the website so my recommendation is to always focus one or the other if you're doing a website for uh, services and you are simply advertising um, your services, just focus on that. If you are going to be doing the uh, online store, uh, my recommendation is to either do a WooCommerce or uh, use Shopify. If you don't have a big budget, my recommendation is to go to Shopify and create a Shopify uh, uh, online store. It's going to cost you about I think $30 a month and it's a really great way to quickly put together a website without a developer and really test out the waters see if you can actually uh, make sales online if you are getting over $20,000 in sales a month then it makes sense to transition from Shopify to WooCommerce you will be able to save some money um, by having your own shopping uh, online store but before you get to that point uh, my recommendation is to really stick with uh, some of the pre-built Shopify uh, templates Shopify is very different from WordPress if in WordPress I would say uh, stay away from templates in Shopify I will say quite the opposite uh, 
pick a template uh, with Shopify because they have a very different methodology on how they operate. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, last thing that I want to uh, talk about is the long-term expense. Um, long-term expense for a website that has been custom programmed is next to nothing. Uh, you will be paying for um, hosting, for domain, and uh, for backups and updates. Backups and updates are about $20 uh, per update, $20 per backup. Very inexpensive, and you can do that once every uh, two or three months, no problem. With something like um, something that has a template on it, first of all, it will be very difficult for you to find uh, a company, a uh, web design company that actually uh, does proper backups and does proper maintenance uh, to maintain such a website because they know how much code there is in the back end of this website and they're not going to be uh, taking that risk of uh, maintenance for, for all of the code that's there. Uh, they might charge you $300 a month for maintenance but in reality, when something goes uh, down, uh, they will likely uh, just not do anything about fixing the website. They will probably try to sell you a new website. So my recommendation is to really uh, make sure that you know what you are getting into when you are going to be um, using a template-based -based website. Template-based websites, they are okay if you're just going to be having an information, uh, informative website and something that is short-term. Term. So you want to try out a new product and you want to see how, uh, how the market reacts to it. So you put together a website fairly quickly and um, you play around with it for about uh, a year, maybe less, and then you uh, figure out what to do from there. But definitely not something that i would recommend long term we rebuild template based websites all the time and you can also see here this website requires a woocommerce right uh, so when i go to install a woocommerce i wasn't able to install woocommerce on this website because uh, apparently uh, the theme included woocommerce but wasn't activated and it also didn't show up in the plugins so <clears throat> Things are buggy and it's very common for uh, the template based websites to have bugs in them. Uh, again, simply because they have so much code in the back end of it. Let's try to install WooCommerce now. I'm going to click Add New. There we go, WooCommerce install now. We're going to see if it's going to work. Now, WooCommerce is a huge plugin. It's enormous. And um, it is going to slow down the website even further. Not only is WooCommerce so big, uh, you can see that this website also has SEO, the Yoast SEO. Yoast is another huge plugin. Um, if you take WooCommerce, Yoast, uh, the caching plugin that was here, <coughs> Okay, see, installation failed, uh, destination folder already exists. So, it doesn't even want to install WooCommerce. Uh, that happens fairly often um, with the template-based websites because they want you to call their technical support and they want you to um, contact the company that created the, uh, the template for them to install WooCommerce because they know where they uh, enable the feature that prevents you from doing that and if you don't think that free templates are in there for money they are there for money and that's why they created templates in the first place because they want to make money from you um, you'll see that they have a premium version of this uh, of this uh, template and if you can step outside of the um, of the bare minimum and the bare minimum uh, sometimes has bugs like this, then you'll be paying them uh, to make modifications and fixes uh, to your website. So my recommendation is to not go this route. Um, 
it can be um, way more expensive than building a proper website from the very start. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Um, uh, definitely check out the skindrip.com uh, website. A really great company, a really great owner. If you're looking for somebody that uh, actually cares about their clients, uh, skindrip.com is definitely uh, the way to to go. Um, I would highly, highly recommend this uh, them as a business um, for the skincare products and uh, services that they're offering. So if you happen to stumble on skin, uh, skindrip.com in future, and uh, it's a different website from what you're seeing right now, probably have uh, changed it and modified it um, to make sure that it actually does work. So you might be wondering what, what happens now? What happens if you're in a similar situation? Because uh, literally about 80% of the small businesses, they are stuck in this exact space uh, as this specific company. And that's why I asked the owner of the company if I could make a video about this uh, problem that she has because uh, it's very <clears throat> universal um, across the web development uh, industry. A lot of small businesses are in this exact situation. My recommendation is to really um, get rid of the shop uh, module <clears throat> because it, it does have problems with the WooCommerce and keep it strictly as the services uh, website. Maybe uh, she would leave the shop button there, um, but it's going to link to a different website, different domain actually. It's going to link into a Shopify website. And then uh, my recommendation is to um, focus on the Shopify as the online store and market it separately from your main website. Again, uh, online stores and the websites that are service-based, there are two different websites completely. And the marketing that involves into marketing online store is very different from the marketing that you need in order to market your services website. Services website requires brochures, flyers, and uh, maybe some um, <clears throat> Facebook locally targeted uh, um, ads. You're not going to get sales from that. You're going to be getting appointments and phone calls. So <clears throat> really important to have a phone number for a services-based website. Have a phone, phone number so people can call you. For the online store, different story no phone numbers because you, you're going to get overwhelmed with phone calls uh, for online store you need a very good robust system that manages and tracks your inventory and uh, something that can be integrated with um, Am with amazon something can be integrated with google shopping um, and that's pretty much your shopify uh, that's what shopify does and it does it really good and the marketing that you're going to be doing for your online store will be focused on really targeting Amazon, really targeting Google uh, shopping, and making sure that if you're running ads locally, uh, sorry, not locally, if you're going to be running ads, they're going to be run um, on a larger scale, pretty much uh, probably all of the United States. Uh, with that scope, so a lot of money, a lot more money uh, to mark that online store, um, a, a lot higher investment, and you don't want to uh, spend at least, you'll probably be spending about $20,000 on marketing online store. You don't want to spend that much money on online store that is embedded within the services um, website. Again, two different things. You don't want to spend a lot of money on something that is not um, tailored to a specific um, to a specific niche to a specific audience. So just um, just think about that because that is a fairly important uh, element when it comes to uh, the way that you structure business. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll be happy to help you out. Hopefully, this. Uh, 30-minute uh, video uh, helped out some of you who are stuck in fairly similar station. And um, if you need the website, let me know. I'll be happy to help out.